Hi, welcome to TV and Hi-Fi Pro. In this video, we're going to talk about the QLED Q95T TV, which is Samsung's flagship in 4K resolution. We had the opportunity to test it in the 65-inch version, but it is also available in 55, 75, and 85 inches. As we'll see during the analysis, this model stands out because it's a full-array local dimming TV and uses Quantum Dot technology. There's another version that comes without the One Connect box and is sold in some countries under the reference Q90T. But apart from this, they both maintain the same features. Before we go into detail about the picture quality, let's take a quick look at the design of the new Samsung QLED Q95T. At first glance, the design is almost identical to the 2019 predecessor Q90R, but with slightly thinner bezels. As with the Q90R, all connections are located in the One Connect box, and there is only one cable, which is also quite thin that goes from the device to the TV. This one cable carries all the picture and sound information, as well as the power supply. The advantage of this system is that you can put the One Connect box wherever you want and place all your devices there to keep everything well organized and hide all the cables around the TV. This is especially important if you're planning to hang it on the wall. Since the Q90T doesn't come with the One Connect box, the thickness is somewhat increased by having all the circuitry integrated into the TV. This Q95T includes the premium version of the One Remote that comes with voice control and that has a very good finish and looks very nice. Now let's talk about the picture quality of this Samsung Q95T and its equivalent in some countries Q90T. But before that, check the calibration. We leave you in the description so that you can enjoy the best picture, as usually the default settings aren't the best to get realistic and natural pictures, so we recommend that you follow our calibration. Well, the first thing we have to point out is that this is a full array TV with a total of 120 local dimming zones. Local dimming feature helps to achieve a higher contrast due to its adjust the light in specific areas of the picture. This number is lower in comparison with the previous Q90R that had 480 zones. Nevertheless, Samsung has improved the algorithms in charge of this backlight and now the local dimming system responds faster. As a result, we can tell if it's more effective reducing blooming around the bright objects. However, the native contrast is a bit lower because of the fewer zones. In any case, the contrast of this TV is really good and the Q95T achieves an impressive black level as well as a superb peak brightness. Blacks are very pure, of course not as the same level of an OLED TV because a full array LED TV will always be worse in this aspect. And this is noticeable in difficult scenes like this one, where the local dimming has to decide between giving more brightness to the shiny object or reducing the brightness to get more pure blacks. In any case, the contrast of this TV is really good, and it's one of the best LED TVs in this area, and also achieves an excellent uniformity without any clouding or light leakage at the corners. You can choose among three dimming modes. First, you can turn it off, which we don't recommend, or you can select standard or high. The best choice is to leave it in standard for HD content via antenna or cable TV, and in high for 4K and HDR content. The local dimming works very well and responds quickly, so except in very specific scenes, you don't notice these changes in lighting that we saw in other models like the LG Nano 996. It also keeps the details in the shadows very well, so you can see all the information in those parts and avoid missing anything that could be important to the plot of a movie. Therefore, although it doesn't achieve the blacks that an OLED TV can do, the truth is that it stays pretty close and is a TV that can be seen in a dark room without any problems. But where the Samsung Q95T stands out the most is with HDR content thanks to its high brightness, especially when it's viewed in a bright room. It can deliver a 200 nit peak brightness in dynamic mode and exceeds 1200 nits in movie mode and in filmmaker mode. So this is one of the strengths that this TV has over its main competitors. It supports HDR10+, HLG, and HDR10, but unfortunately like all Samsung TVs, it doesn't support Dolby Vision. This is undoubtedly one of its weakest points since virtually all brands except Samsung support Dolby Vision and even implement it in low-end models. Besides its high-end brightness, what makes it one of the best TVs for viewing in brightly lit rooms is its anti-glare filter. We love it and we think it's the best anti-glare system available. Sony uses a similar system in its high ranges and LG and its OLED TVs also do a good job. But Samsung's system goes a bit further and virtually removes any reflection from windows or lamps. This panel also includes a filter that greatly improves viewing angles. It makes this TV look great from the side. In fact, in this area, it's really close to OLED TVs and is certainly much better than any other LED TV. The Q95T and Q90T series use Quantum Dot technology to improve color reproduction and get purer colors. 
Colors are vibrant and maintain saturation very well in very bright areas without washing out. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a native 10-bit panel this year, instead using an 8-bit panel with FRC. Still, we had no banding issues and the color gamut covers about 100% of the DCI-P3 color spectrum. It does a great upscaling with low resolution content showing a great amount of texture and detail. It excels in noise reduction, which makes the images look very clean and without artifacts. However, we found quite a bit blur in moving images, even with the blur reduction parameters at maximum. And this aspect is far behind some rivals like the Sony X-H95. You can choose among three interpolation modes to get a smoother image or turn interpolation off completely if you want a more cinematic image. The panel has a native refresh rate of 120 Hz and since it comes with a HDMI 2.1 port, you can play video games on the new generation of PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles at a rate of 120 Hz and 4K. It supports auto low latency mode and variable refresh rate through free sync and also achieves an input lag that drops to 95 milliseconds by enabling the game mode, depending on the options we enable in this mode. Regarding to sound, it has a 4.2.2 system with 60 watts of power and includes a new feature like Q-Symphony to use in combination with Samsung soundbars and object tracking sound. This latter feature tracks objects in the scene to simulate a more realistic effect, but it doesn't achieve the performance on Sony LED TVs with the acoustic surface system. Overall, the sound is quite good, but it's nothing that stands out from the competition. It comes with a new version of Tizen, and it has a quick response and everything loads fast. There's a bunch of apps to download, and it supports the voice assistance of Google and Alexa. To sum up, the Q95T is a TV that scores in most areas and is polyvalent. As positive points, firstly, the good levels of blacks and brightness achieved thanks to the full array backlighting and its magnificent local dimming system, which responds quickly and adjusts the lighting very precisely to minimize blooming and achieve good uniformity. It delivers a great impact on HDR contents thanks to its spectacular brightness which together with its anti-glare system makes it an almost unbeatable TV when you watch HDR content in a very bright room. It's also worth mentioning its good viewing angle that allows you to watch it perfectly from any place and its performance for gaming by including HDMI 2.1, being compatible with FreeSync and reaching an input lag of only 9.5 milliseconds. However, there are also some important weaknesses such as the fact that it doesn't support neither Dolby Vision nor Dolby Atmos, and there's quite a bit of motion blur in fast scenes. Therefore, although it doesn't reach the blacks and the response time of an OLED television, where this technology is still unbeatable, it's a good alternative to OLED, especially when watched in very bright rooms where it stands out thanks to all we've discussed during this video. And it's particularly interesting television in large formats, where the OLED 77 inches have a much higher price. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and enable the notifications to stay up to date with our new content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.